Hi, I'm Lisa from Lime Bay Press again, wearing the pinny this time. This is just a very short video to address something that we've been asked a lot lately. Um, and it's something that we've been informed that can be done with our polymer plates. But I wanted to make sure you could understand all the implications. And the question we keep getting asked is, can you use photopolymer plates for hot foil printing? Well, with the experiments that we've been running, the answer is yes. But there's a lot of pitfalls and paper testing and foil testing and the actual process of making the plates suitable for foiling is a completely different beast. Let me show you some things that we've been working on. So what you can see here are examples of the plates that have had further development. Basically, they've been placed in a very hot oven for 30 minutes to make sure that all the moisture has been removed from them. Allowed to cool and then we've mounted on our foiling machine. Over here, you can see some of the results and I'll show you these, this particular plate working on the press. So what we found, yes, we can make a plate that you can use for hot foil printing. And there are still black backed KF15, KM152 plate. The sort of paper that you're going to be foiling on can give you different results. Here, we're getting a perfectly reasonable result on a GF Smith Neutralis board. On here, with a little bit of mate ready, I think we're going to be fine, but this is a 300 gram Medievalis. We've got some Somerset cottons. Again, with a little bit of re mate ready. They do like to take the foil. We changed foil on this one for a 300 gram Bockingford. And also onto a 300 gram Gamund cotton, which with a little bit of make ready in some places should be foiling fine. The one disappointment, and I haven't been through all the colours so far from the colour plan range, is on, yeah, a GF Smith colour plan, which is a shame because it's a very popular paper. So, that's some of the pitfalls. We can make the plates, they take a lot longer to do, or you could even continue the process yourself if you make your own plates and you use a steel back. Over here is just a little old tabletop foiling press that we've been using to test the plates. Let me just come around here and you can see here, you have to excuse the marks on the plate because I put the foiling upside down. All sorted now though, but you can see the deep red colour of the plate because it's been exposed to high temperatures. Now what I've also found experimenting with these is your press needs to be a lot hotter than it normally would be. This machine is currently set to 170 degrees. Because we've already post heated the steel back plates to make them a lot harder. We're not having any problems with anything melting off or disappearing. And you can actually see let me swap places with the cameraman. But if I pop some samples through for you, this is on the uh, GF Smith Neutralis board. You need a little bit longer dwell. But we get a fairly good print. Something else, let me just do a couple more. You'll notice on this that I've got a at least a one and a half to two second dwell. But the plates are hard enough to withstand the continual pressure and the heat. And they don't need a lot of time in between 
to get hot enough again to transfer the foil onto the board. There we go. Each one is taking good print as the first did. It may be that you have to play around with your foils and find something suitable. And I'll be talking to our foil suppliers about a foil that will work with photopolymer plates and a colour plan board. It may just need a different glue to release. I don't know the technicalities of making foil, so I don't know what's going to be required. The only other thing I would like to draw your attention to is the actual quality of the foiling. We're getting a lovely clean print, but unlike normal magnesium foiling plates, we're not getting that really shiny mirrored flat finish because the photopolymer plates aren't as hard as your magnesium foiling plates. So the sum texture of the card is always going to show through. So basically, I said it was only going to be a small video. Yes, you can foil with photopolymer plates. If we start offering the service, it's yet to be decided as to whether we want to make photopolymer plates suitable for hot foil. We're going to have a conversation about that one. Um, if you already make your own plates, use a steel back plate and want to have a go at making plates for hot foiling, they need cooking. Um, you need to make sure that every small amount of moisture is out of that plate. I'd also suggest that you may want to look at your design, um, especially on the softer cotton papers where the foil could stick to more areas or just be placed a lot thicker on your paper than or on your board than you would normally get with a magnesium foiling die. But if you only want to produce something like this um, for yourself or for a small run or many other reasons, I'm really happy with the results that we've got here. Um, but like I say, it's there's no great amount of pressure on the press um, no more than I would have normal for a normal foiling die. The biggest difference is the pre-preparation of those plates to make them withstand the heat. But also, and it shocked me, it really did surprise me, the temperature we have to have our machine to be able to transfer the foil onto the paper. And that's because unlike magnesium foiling plates, the photopolymers don't hold onto the heat like the metal would. Um, but this, well, this particular plate has been sitting on this machine for two days and it's been heated up fully each day. And apart from where you can see some of the polymer from the base of the plate and where I managed to get foil on the actual design when I put it on the wrong way around, it's not moved, it's not gone gooey, it's not broken. And if I just quickly grab another plate that's already been on the press when another one we were testing yesterday, which actually, because it wasn't on as long, hasn't gone as dark, but prints just as well. We only need, it's not a very great example, but you only still need a very small amount of dye bonding tape to attach your plates to the machine and get perfectly good results. How fine the text can go, we're going to move on and we're going to do some test plates ourselves just to see what the plates can hold um, and the gaps between um, letters, for example, or between the lines to see if any of the foil then fills in and how fine we can go. Um, like I say, it's, it's, this is going to be one of those things where how you use your machine um, what type of machine you have, what board you're printing on, what type of foil you're using. <laughs> All these 
and how much experience you have, but all of these factors are going to affect that print. Um, it may be a learning curve or a route that you want to go down and experiment with. But I am really happy with the results that we've had today and from what we've been testing over the last couple of days. If you want any more information, please feel free to drop me an email or comment on the video. Um, and I'll do what I can to help and advise. Thank you.